When looking for an entry to mid-level electric burr grinder, there are several names that will inevitably pop up, and this is one of them, the Baratza Sete. It has an extremely recognizable shape, and people have no trouble recommending the Sete 30, 270, and 270 WI in each of their respective price brackets. But how do they actually stack up? Well, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe, because we're about to find out. Before we get going, I want to make it very clear that I purchased this grinder with my own money and all of the opinions in this video are explicitly my own. If you want to check out any of the Sete grinders, I will have them linked down in the description below. I opted to buy the 270WI because within this grinder, I effectively have a Sete 30, a Sete 270, and a 270WI all in one, so I can comment on the entire product lineup. Starting off with the design and build quality, I was immediately struck by just how different this grinder is, both visually and form factor wise. Personally, I kind of like the unique looks, but I can definitely see them being a little divisive depending on the styling of the kitchen you plan to put it in. The countertop footprint is extremely compact, but then it sweeps up to a wider top section, and perched on top of that is a 400 gram hopper. The result is a grinder that is quite visually top heavy, but in reality it is relatively sturdy. My main issue with the form factor was the overall height. You'll have to measure your own kitchen, but in mine, the 15 and 3 quarter inch height was just blocking my overhead cabinets, which was far from ideal. Moving on to build quality, most of the external parts are made of plastic, with the exception of the port filter holder and the actual burr assembly. This seems to be a bit of a trend for Baratza grinders, where they opt to spend most of the money on the internal components and have a relatively basic plastic exterior. On the base model Sete 30, I don't see this as being too much of an issue, but as you start to step up to the 270 and especially the 270 WI models, I just don't think that this level of finishing is quite appropriate for the asking price. This is definitely one disadvantage of using the same chassis for the whole product lineup, but I think it's important to note that it doesn't feel concerningly cheap. There's no bend or flex to the shell because of the thick plastic used, and it does feel like it would hold up relatively well over time. Moving on to the user interface and user experience as a whole, things were pretty straightforward. Two buttons on the right side are used to adjust the programmed grinding time, or in the case of the 270WI, the weight. On the 270 models, you also get three buttons on the left side where you can program in three different recallable doses. For example, if you want to switch between a single, double, and triple shot basket. The start button starts the grinding and also allows you to pause the grind in order to settle the grounds before continuing, while a stop button will cancel the grind entirely. The adjustability of the port filter holder arms was really nice. The rubber grips can be rotated to suit a variety of different styles of port filter or even other brewing methods such as a V60 if you put the arms into their wider position. The top support for the port filters was a little finicky at times, but served its purpose well enough. I was definitely never worried about my port filter or dosing cup dropping while grinding. My single biggest complaint about the user experience and possibly the Sete lineup as a whole is the grinding volume. These things are loud. If you're someone who wants to make coffee while others are sleeping, or even while entertaining, the volume of these grinders could be a bit of a concern. These are definitely not grinders where you can carry on your conversation while they're grinding, and this might be in part due to the unique way that they actually work. The Sete grinders work in the opposite way to most other conical set burr grinders. Instead of the center burr rotating, it remains fixed while the outer burr rotates around it. Apparently this helps with grinding efficiency, and there might just be some merit to that because these grinders are fast. Grinding an 18 gram dose of espresso took just 11 seconds. For comparison, I was programming in times closer to 16 seconds on the new Malconig X54. Grind retention was also respectable at around 0.4 or 0.5 grams between shots, which is manageable if you're considering single dosing. The grind quality was very nice straight out of the grinder with a fluffy texture, like really fluffy, and almost no visible clumping until I got to the absolute finest grind settings. 
Even then, it was minimal and definitely an improvement over something like the Breville Smart Grinder Pro or their other built-in grinders. In order to grind fine enough for espresso, I did have to install two of the included shims. Luckily, that process was pretty straightforward and the required Allen key was included. Once I installed those shims, I was able to pull some nice bottomless portafilter shots, and the taste was about where I'd expect for a conical grinder in this price range. Clean, with decent clarity, and body that tended a bit towards the lighter side when compared to the other grinders I currently have in studio. With this combination of good grinding quality, great grinding speed, and some decent programmability, I can see why people don't shy away from recommending the set day lineup of grinders. So if you've made it this far in the video and you're happy with what you've heard so far, your next question likely is, which one of the three should I buy? All three of the Sete 30, 270, and 270 WI will produce the same quality of grinds. The question of which one is right for you will come down to what brew methods you want to use and how much you value the programmability. If you are not planning to make espresso, get the Sete 30. That is an easy recommendation for me to make. For the price that they're asking for that grinder, this is some great grind quality. However, if you do want to use brew methods that require some more precise control, like espresso, it's really not going to be the best option. With only 30 grind steps spanning the whole range of 230 to 950 microns, that means that each step is about a 24 micron jump. And while this might sound quite small, it's still a little bit too large to truly dial in espresso. I tried to dial in using only the top adjustment ring, which would be the equivalent to having the Sete 30, and I found myself running too fast at setting 5, and then almost choking my machine at setting 4. The Sete 270 solves this problem by adding a micro adjustment ring. Nine steps of micro adjustment in between each of the existing 30 macro steps results in a combined 270 steps, hence the name. And although the coffee community likes to frown upon stepped grinders, I can assure you these steps are plenty small enough to use in an effectively stepless way. An argument can even be made that this is a better option because you can return to the exact same grind setting. Say if you want to switch from espresso to a pour over setting and then back to the exact same espresso setting. And there are some very high end grinders that use this method for that exact reason. The other feature that the Sete 270 adds, besides the extra grind steps, is the pre-programmable dosing buttons. This will be useful if you often switch between double and single shots, making espresso, making pour over, or any other situation where you're changing your dose or grind setting. If you're someone who plans to just grind at the same setting with the same dose each and every day, then you probably won't even touch that feature. And if that's the case, it should be noted that you can actually save some money by going with the Sete 30 and buying the 270 adjustment ring after the fact. And finally, we come to the 270 WI, the top of the range. Instead of relying on a timed grind, the WI model has a built-in Akaya scale that not only weighs the dose as it's ground, but also intelligently learns when to stop the burrs to get exactly the dose you want, each and every time. Now I was really excited to test out this feature, but after about a month or so of use, I don't think that the WI would be my choice even if money was no option. Here's why. When the scale is working as intended, it can get the dose to about plus minus 0.1 grams according to the display, which is extremely impressive. The first problem is the way that it uses the cantilevered portafilter forks to make that measurement. Add in a portafilter of unknown weight and dimensions, also cantilevered from the same point, and anyone even slightly familiar with physics will start to see the difficulties in the calculation this scale is trying to perform. What this means is that while the dose is consistent from shot to shot, assuming you use the same portafilter, it's not necessarily accurate when checked with an external scale, or if you change the vessel that you're grinding into. The second issue was that the system overall was pretty finicky. If it wasn't happy with how the portafilter was zeroed, or you put the portafilter in too quickly, or took too long to redistribute the grinds, it would freeze up or reset itself. Once you get a good routine going and learn its little quirks, it's fine, but it just wasn't anywhere near as intuitive as I was hoping. Finally, and probably the biggest issue, is that time-based grinders with a full hopper can generally dose with about 0.2 to 0.3 grams of accuracy. So for the added fuss, 
and the added cost of the WI, I simply don't think that the added 0.1 or 0.2 grams is necessarily worth it. So to conclude, or for those who skipped to the end of the video, the Sete lineup of grinders are solid options in their respective price brackets, with the only real downsides being the height and the very loud grinding volume. The Sete 30 will provide the same grind quality as the 270 models at a lower cost, but it is not suitable for espresso due to the large steps between grind settings. Stepping up to the 270 will give you an almost stepless level of grind adjustment, which is more than good enough for dialing in espresso, and also provides three programmable time-based dosing buttons. The 270WI has some impressive tech built in, but in its current form, the increased fussiness and price to gain marginal dosing consistency improvements make it hard to justify over the already great base 270. Again, I'll have all three of these grinders linked down in the description below. If you've enjoyed this video, please leave us a like and even consider subscribing if you want to see some more like it in the future. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.